of seeds of peace. Part of Mr. Fuller's final message was that we now have the technical capability to take care of everyone in the world. I'm not talking about reforming humanity. I'm talking about for the first time in history, it is not true that it has to be you or me. We now have the capability to take care of everybody. This is the very essence of our evening here together. There was a possibility someday we might be able to do so little, so much or so little. We might be able to take care of everybody. So I started going into politics. I went in 55 years ago into development of technology, seeking to produce so much living room with so few pounds of material, so few urges of energy and seconds of time, we might be able to take care of everybody and prove that the working assumption that had to be you and me was invalid. We now have the capability to take care of everybody, rather the technical capability to do so. So how does having the technical capability to take care of basic human needs tie into world peace? Mr. Fuller considers it the basis for the contention that creates war. So if there uh, seems to be there is inadequacy of life support, somebody's going, a lot of people are going to die, then this is the ba basis of politics itself. What policy do you pursue in view of the fact that not around, a whole lot of people are going to die? Which ones are, are the ones that are going to have to die? So that's been, for the last hundred years, the basic contention between the capitalists and the socialists as the extreme political camps. As a consequence, we have the and a complete authority given the head of state to spend any amount of money to be sure it's not outside that it goes down. And so this has brought about enormous armaments built up, enormous amount of, of wealth has been made out of the armaments, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. And the, we have then, as we all know, the consequence of all this, we now the capability to destroy all your man in half an hour. 1970, we crossed a threshold when, for the first time in history, can be engineeringly demonstrated, we can now, with a 10-year design revolution, taking the metals going all into the weaponry, put them in what are called living room, within 10 years we can have all humanity living the highest standard of living anybody has ever known on a sustainable basis while phasing out all further use of fossil fuels and atomic energy. I became then the first person in the world to know that now war is obsolete. It does not have to be you and me. No borders? From who? Between us anywhere in the world? Between uh, countries? I see no point in that whatsoever. But the seeds on the open wind No, no, boundary lines or walls They will watch the battlegrounds with me And the peace shall be restored His death prompted media attention from all over the country, but they seem to have passed over one of the most important points I think Bucky was trying to make during his last public tour in conjunction with a series of integrity days, and that obvious point being the need for integrity to implement change. Just technology and nothing else would solve our problem? Of course not. The main premise is yesterday that it could not be done, it was not solvable, I now know it's solvable. So it's a question then of the integrity of human beings integrity themselves. Mean, what's integrity? Hmm? What, what is integrity of human beings? The capability of the human beings, either spontaneously or courageously, to live and act in accordance with the truth, as you see it. Not in terms of what the crowd is doing, not in doing what the politics are doing. Very few human beings achieve that, though. Mm -hmm. I can point to Gandhi, with, Christ. With, 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 great many, with a great many, it's very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. So now what remains to be done? I say it remains to be intelligent about it and do something about it. And now,